Right, this is the polls here on Joy News with me, Elton Brobe, and this afternoon we have a lot to unpack for you. Now, government has announced the rollout of 5G telephony services in Ghana, marking a significant advancement in the country's telecommunication infrastructure. Addressing the news conference in Accra today, Communications and Digitalization Minister Esla Ozu Ekufu said the introduction of 5G technology in Ghana is expected to bring numerous advantages, including faster internet speed, lower literacy and improved connectivity, which will enhance various sectors such as healthcare, education and business. The minister emphasized that the move is part of the government's broader strategy to modernize the nation's digital landscape and ensure that Ghanaians can compete globally in the digital economy. NGIC has been awarded a 5G license and is expected to launch 5G services across Ghana within the next six months with plans for future expansion into other parts of Africa. The shared 4G and 5G infrastructure will be built by Nokia and Radisys, with IT architecture and integration provided by Microsoft and Tech Mahindra. This collaboration ensures that we leverage cutting edge world-class expertise and technology to build a robust digital infrastructure. NGIC's neutral hosting model and network as a service offering will accelerate national enablement programs, reduce the digital divide, optimize capital expenditure, and ensure efficient operating costs while respecting environmental, social, and governance fundamentals by reducing environmental impact and carbon footprint. This innovative approach will make high-speed, secure, and seamless mobile services accessible to all Ghanaians. In addition to the above, the NGIC network will provide a strong foundation for the government to offer new services to the people of Ghana through extended inclusion programs, e-government applications, and enabling unlimited opportunities for the private sector and the economy to grow. It is strike knowledge that any 10% expansion in broadband infrastructure leads to a 1.5% to 2% growth in GDP. So we expect our economy to grow with this project. We'll bring that to you. But first, let's get to understand how 5G services work in Ghana. And we'll put together this uh, for your understanding. And 5G is the fifth generation uh, mobile network following IG, 2G, uh, 1G, 2G, 3G, and of course, 4G, which is still, uh, or the LTE, which is still in Ghana. Uh, we are here to migrate uh, into 5G now. It connects virtually everybody and everything, including uh, machines, objects, and devices. 5G offers higher data speed, ultra low, let's see, and more reliability and massive network capability. Those are some of the advantages you will get when the 5G rollout is complete. And we are told that in the next six months. And will also provide increased availability and a more consistent user experience, enhanced performance, and of course, efficient support new user experience and connect new industries. And those are some of the uh, the, the, the advantages that you are likely to get uh, on 5G uh, network. And so, so what you have on your screen, how different is 5G, those are some of the reasons. Uh, analog voice, of course, uh, introduced digital voice. So we've come a long way from the 1980s all the way up to 2024, uh, broadband, LTE, 3G, and a lot of innovation going on in the technological space. And it's not ended because every day there's new development, new cutting edge solution that seeks to address emerging challenges. And, and, and then the, the, the expectation is that 5G will add on to what already exists and make it even better. So 5G is unified, advanced air interface with high speed, superior reliability, and negligence, literacy, enabling next generation user experience, new services, and impacting industries like transportation, healthcare, agriculture, and of course, logistics. So these are some of the, you know, the, the difference in terms of 
what, 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 what you will get with your 5G network. So, so, so the thing is about 5G, and already government, uh, there are concerns about the selection of the company leading to the rollout uh, with this innovation. And the Minister for uh, Communication and Digitalization, Esla, also has been explaining why government settled on this company. So we'll have the minister explanation for you uh, uh, shortly and, and then get to understand this uh, matter very well. So investigative journalist Manasseh Azure Awene is alleging that Next Gen in Franco Limited was awarded a 5G contract less than a week before President Akufa granted executive approval for the deal. And he joins us with some perspective. Uh, before they listen to the communications minister's justification, for awarding the contract to Next Gen in Franco Limited. So let's see if, if we can get some reaction to what we've been told uh, since morning about the reason government settled at this company and why it became necessary that this company was formed just a week after the policy approval was approved and now they are leading the 5G rule out. Manasseh Azuri joins us via Zoom. Manasseh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Elton. So you heard the minister. I mean, does the explanation satisfy you? No, the explanation doesn't satisfy me. And this deal is not different from how similar deals in the past were awarded. And I am not a telecoms expert, but I've done stories in the area of procurement and the award of government contracts. And these deals, uh, deals of this nature follow the likes of SML that we've been grappling with. It is so interesting to note that uh, about six days before the president granted executive approval for us to roll out this uh, service, a company is formed and all of a sudden that company becomes the preferred vehicle to carry out this uh, uh, service. The question is, how did this company know that such a service was being uh, introduced? Mm. And couldn't we have extended it or opened it up to different companies, both national and international? I am not an expert, but what I'm hearing from experts and what you have highlighted mm -hmm. shows that 5G is going to be a real game changer in the telecoms industry. Right. It is valued at hundreds of millions of dollars. And so if you can just start a company today and tomorrow that company uh, gets the contract, mm. there, there, there has to be questions. And it is also not true, there is some insinuation I've heard from some media reports that this company is a consortium of uh, companies, including... Uh, in fact, there were seven Nokia of them, according, according to the minister, so, seven, seven, including KNET and a few others. P perhaps I can let you hold your thought on that. Let's listen to the minister's justification, and then I'll let you respond appropriately. Now, this is a special purpose vehicle. Once government took the decision that we would use a neutral infrastructure company to deliver the service, there is no existing neutral infrastructure company at the moment. So it had to be specifically formed for the purpose of delivering this 
service based on the strategic policy decision of government. And it is born out of, as I indicated, our past experiences. And that is why we chose not to auction it. Um, I'm sure the finance minister would have been happy if we had sold it off at auction, collected our money, and moved on without caring what impact it would have on the sector. Unfortunately for the finance minister, unfortunately for Ghana, we in the Ministry of Communications care about the impact of decisions taken on the growth of the sector. And so after analyzing the nature of our telecommunications sector, it was clear that if you auctioned the spectrum, only one or two entities will be able to acquire it. They will roll out the network at their own pace. And if 4G was introduced in this country in 2015, and we still have only 15% 4G penetration, and we auction 5G, within the next 10 years, we will still be hovering around 10% penetration. Is that what this government or this country wants? No. We want to accelerate the pace of access to telecommunications to every Ghanaian, everywhere in the country, regardless of where you are. So the best vehicle that the government thought would enable us to provide this service to all Ghanaians within the shortest possible time is to set up a neutral shared infrastructure company. And that was set up following the policy decision taken to auction it. And that is why it is a new company. So that's the uh, communications minister's justification for settling on this company for the rollout of the 5G internet services. And according to him, according to her, there's no existing infrastructure now. The reason why this special vehicle was put together to facilitate the rollout. And what, from our checks, the seven companies make up this company and they include Ascent Digital, Knet, uh, Radisson, Nokia, Tech Mahindra, and two telecommunication companies, AT Ghana and Telesel Ghana. Manasseh is still here with me. Manasseh, so you've heard the minister, and I, and I brought this out so that we can put it in proper context. What's your reaction Elton, to, to what, what, yes? Elton, I have the registration documents of this company, and it has two shareholders. Mm -hmm. One of the shareholders is Legal uh, Integrated Consult Limited, and then there's another individual who bears a name that sounds like Nigerian, the details are on my Facebook page. Right. And then the company that is also involved in, together with this individual happens to be owned by that same individual. So the registration of this company doesn't list any of these others. This may come on board to support or collaborate in the provision of the service, but the company is not formed by a consortium that has been listed. Two, granted that Ghana wants to launch a spacecraft, and we don't have any uh, company in Ghana that is currently manufacturing uh, space, spacecrafts. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is to put out the policy, that this is the policy. We know that we don't have a single company that can do it. So we want these timelines who can meet these timelines, mm -hmm. and then throw it out there for uh, individuals. Many companies could also have been formed and then taken advantage of this service. So we cannot say that even if we didn't have the, the infrastructure, this is the only company that can be formed to take advantage of that. And you think that, so a, company, that is, a company formed like a week before, a week after the, the announcement was made, obviously lacked the capacity to roll out what the minister is intending to do. And then the other issue about fairness in the selection process, the reason why you think that this should have been opened up for other people to show interest, if they're so minded. Yes, because so much money is involved here. And we are told that the government has a 7% stake in it. Mm. We, as of now, don't even know how much the company is going to make. 
And that argument that they want to do it this way so that every Ghanaian would have access to it isn't true. Ask Eslo Usu. We have a company. This company is called Next Generation Infraco. But we have another company, Smart Infraco, that was supposed to have dealt with the uh, fiber cable network that was laid across the country. It's a multi-million dollar project mm. that was installed in the Mahama administration. And we are told that Smart Infraco was to run it right. so that the municipal, metropolitan, and district assemblies can all be connected to this uh, system. I went around the country, specifically the, from Volta to the Northern Corridor, where this cable is, and then a lot of the assemblies don't even have um, any connectivity. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how is this company going to connect for every Ghanaian to enjoy? It is not true. This company is not a mobile service provider. Uh, MTN, Airtel, Tigo, uh, Telecel, and others would have to go and then get this network from this company and now distribute. Mm -hmm. At what cost? How much is this company making? How much is Ghana making at the end of it? I guess these, 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 these are, are here to come out. Yeah, these are questions we need to ask before even going ahead to handpick a single company that is formed solely for this purpose. And then we claim that that's the only uh, uh, special purpose vehicle to be able to deliver this service. I don't think so. And from what uh, some industry experts are saying, mm -hmm. we may end up shortchanging ourselves and the benefits from this uh, great service may go to one individual, just like we saw when a company was hardly set up a week or so before President Kufado announced the closure of borders. And this was the same company that was solely uh, asked to do testing at the borders. It made close to a hundred million dollars. Right. And how much did Ghana get? Okay. So these are very, um, how Leg do you call it? Very uh, legitimate questions that we need answers to. Yes. All right. Manasa, thank you very much. Th these are early days yet, and I know that there are days to follow. There will be more issues on this matter. The telecom chamber says that they are preparing themselves to issue a statement on this. The government is on the. Uh, on the road to explain even more. But I guess there are so many questions that we need answers to. And as of now, I don't think that we've gotten everything from government. And uh, I don't know what you intend doing going for it, it, just briefly. Actually, this company is supposed to pay the payment plan and everything. Mm -hmm. So I will release more information on this so that we all have a discussion. Right. So uh, to ensure that Ghana is not shortchanged as we have always uh, been shortchanged by those in power. Manasseh Azura Awene is an investigative journalist and uh, he has concerns with the companies selected by government to undertake the rollout of the 5G telephony you know, network. That government says that should happen within the next six months. The ministry, they've been explaining why they settled on this company because such infrastructure does not exist and they needed somebody or a, or a special purpose vehicle to carry this through, how feasible, how, how reliable, how transparent the process has been, I guess in the, in the days to follow, we'll have more time to deal with this matter. But right here today, you know, yesterday ended the limited voter registration, like after 21 days of registration, and an extra two days, there are calls again for the Electoral Commission to further extend the limited registration period to capture those who could not register before the closing day yesterday. And of course, of prospective voters were seen at the registration centers late yesterday as the exercise wrapped up. Now, this afternoon, we're going to have our own version of inter-party advisory committee meeting in the studio. We have the electoral commission and the political parties here to do a post-mortem of the exercise. Before that, though, here's how my colleagues, Rejoice Semifap and Anabwati here, have captured the closing minutes of the registration in Accra and Kumas, respectively. Long winding queues characterize the final day of the voter registration process at many centers as first time voters rushed to get their names captured in the voters register. In the Ayawaso West Wogon constituency, officials reported registering over 5,000 voters over the entire registration period. Over here in Legon, it's been largely successful. The turnout has been good, and then 
we've been able to register almost everybody that has come to us. So today being the last day, we hope that we'll register everybody and leave. We know that we can do that day. For the projection, I can't give it to you online, but for now we've done about 5,000. Yeah, yes. But most of them, since the first day, the turnout has been great. So mostly when they come and the place is full, they don't want to sit in the queue, they would go. Just nearby at the La Enquantanan Medina Constituency Registration Centre, there were altercations involving some men who brought in senior high school students for registration. Despite these challenges, the EC official stated that the exercise had been largely successful. Promising every person in the queue before the official time of closing will be registered even if it goes beyond past 6 p.m. It's been a fruitful exercise. It's been very um, quiet and calm. A few altercations here and there, but it's not something that's disturbed the flow of work here at the centre. We are within our expected figure. We we're hoping to do a little over 4,000 and we have a little after 12 midday, but I, I can I can say that we'll be able to attend to them before 6 p.m. when the centre will be closed finally. Many potential first-time voters at the University of Ghana Centre said they had to forgo lectures to register. Similarly, senior high school students reported skipping classes to enroll on the voters' register. I knew that you know, I had to come and register today because today was actually the deadline. But I would you know, urge or I would you know, urge that the EC at least extend the deadline again because there are more people um, out there that, are, that have been registered, especially looking at the diaspora. There are even more people there that do not even know that there is an ongoing process at Legon Hall. So I think that good sensitization would do so that these people can actually come and register. So I was aware of the 21 days, but then I've had a busy schedule being in between classes and such. So today is the day that I'm free that I'll be able to come and partake in the registration for the voters ID. I go off the school. I'm a brother, so I was not that allowed to be coming out. And I didn't, have, I didn't know any place to do my voters ID. That's the main reason why. I'll wait for the next time. Meanwhile, MP for Ayawasu West Wogon, Lydia Alhassan, and Madina MP Francis Xavier Susu appealed to the EC to make special provisions for first time voters who might miss the deadline. From day one, it's been peaceful, it's been orderly. Uh, yes, we all know what happened the first, second day, but after that, we have had quite a successful process. Um, it's just that the numbers here are many. We are talking about a student population of over 40,000. Uh, most of them are first time voters. Look at the last day, look at the numbers. And it's been like this from day one. Some sort of a different arrangement is made for us. We have a population of so for me, that is my concern. Here in Medina, uh, things have been uh, relatively smooth. So we have a few challenges. But as of yesterday, we had a total of about 3,692 um, that has registered. Today, you can see the numbers. Um, the day is far gone, uh, but the numbers are still increasing. And most of them are students and first-time voters. Uh, so we are in talks with the officials of the EC that um, even if the day... Uh, and without them getting the opportunity, whether we either give them some number or we extend the number of hours, they'll be able to stay so we can get everyone here registered before the day is over. These potential voters are hopeful of exercising their constitutional right in the 2024 general elections and making a difference as they defied the hot sun, stayed in queues, all in a bid to get their identity captured on the national voters' roll. Rejoice, Semifak Pesu's report, read to you. The limited voter registration exercise ongoing for first-time voters comes to an end today. Here at the Ashanti Regional EC Head Office, housing about four constituencies, including Inshaeso, Menshia South, Menshia North and Bantama, a number of first-time voters stripped in to participate in the registration exercise. Participants from various schools, including Kumasi Girls Secondary School and Kumasi Secondary Technical School and Opokuari School came in to participate in the registration exercise. Well, there have been several allegations 
allegations leveled against each other by some political party agents. All right, yeah, you, you, you welcome back to the studio. This is the pause, and of course, in the studio, the discussion already, already, already underway here in the studio. My guests are already, already having fun. We're going to have our own version of the IPAC meeting this afternoon. Now, joining me here in the studio is Dr. Shibo Kweku, Director of Electoral Services with the Electoral Commission. Ivan Snemakum of the MPP will join us via Zoom. He is the Director of Elections with the MPP. Kofi Akpalu is founder of the LPG. And of course, Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Musa Fagbandi, also in the studio. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank you. So, the, uh, uh, Dr. Kweku, so let me ask of your sum up. In the last it was, uh, 21 days, you added two more. So, in the last 23 days, you've been out and about registering people 18 and above. You ended the exercise yesterday. How will you sum it up for us? What I would say is that by for the first two days, I would say that there's a rubbish. But the, even though we had challenges in the first two days, we added two days to that. And I, I've been saying that this number that we were looking at could have been registered within one week. Mm -hmm. So we have given enough time for them to register. We picked around 60,000 a day. Mm -hmm. And we came down for the last five days around 20,000, 20,000, meaning that the numbers were almost exhausted. Mm -hmm. But I was surprised to see... Yes, people, people are yes, uh, asking, for, yeah, asking for extended and I, and I an extension of the exercise. If we extend it to 7 December, still there will be a quorum for extension. Mm. So, so the door is closed for now? It's closed for now, but yesterday at the APAC meeting, discussions are going on that we, we, we may have to do mop-up, so the commission will come out with final decision on that. Mop-up means open the space for people to still register? Yes, exactly. We will do that, but not now, maybe mm. uh, in the next two months or so. Provisionally, do you have an idea how many people you've registered? I don't have the figures for today because it's being compiled. Exactly. Yes, but if you can go around. I'll, I'll go around and come back. So let me also pick the talks of, let me start with Kofi Apalu, uh, founder of the LPG. Kofi, you also monitored. How will you describe the exercise that ended yesterday? Uh, I would say we had a very successful uh, registration exercise. Mm -hmm. Everything went fine. The only problem we had was the first two days when there were some bottlenecks here and there. Mm -hmm. But after that, uh, everything has gone smoothly. Mm -hmm. And uh, the DRC have also worked very, 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 very well in their communities. Uh, when there was a, a challenge or something like that, they will meet and discuss, uh, especially uh, Nandoli. Nandoli constituency where we had about 70 uh, people who were challenged. Right. Yeah, they, were, they challenged 70 people mm -hmm. and they had to, uh, be, uh, what, uh, it's like rejected the... Uh, the, the, the registration. Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, are you referring to those who, who, who were deemed to have used fake Ghana card numbers to register? Uh, no, actually... That one was Pussy, yeah. That was Pussy got, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, not only yeah, because uh, they were Fulanese. Okay. About 70 Fulanese. They went there to register. You mean foreigners? Yeah, foreigners. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, specifically Fulanese. Mm -hmm. So, and they have to uh, reject the, uh, this thing, the DRC. Okay. Met. And uh, you know, the DRC, the District Registration Review Committee, exactly. uh, they comprises the political parties, mm -hmm. uh, the district education officer, mm -hmm. the, the, com the district commander, and then the EC and other people, you know the chiefs from that community. So they sat and they realized that the people were not coming from the community. Mm. They don't know them from anywhere in the community. And they couldn't even uh, speak their local language right. and the rest. So they have to uh, let them go. We'll, we'll look at all those issues. We've got a lot of these challenges came up. I mean, I, I know the Electoral Commission, they are investigating thousands of people, mm -hmm. uh, the, the registration and all that. But let me pick Mustafa's initial comments on the matter. Thank you very much. I think basically by and large, I'm grateful that um, the commission, as of yesterday's IPAC, is giving some hearing or some listenership to 
the fact that there are still some numbers mm -hmm. to mop up. It's apparent because we can understand that in the beginning of the exercise, I believe that it was more than two days, we mm -hmm. encountered a series of challenges, except that the challenges were different. First day we had different issues, and then up to three days we had different other issues. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, I think we must commend the numerous Ghanaians who have queued to participate in this exercise. Quite apart from the fact that the Electoral Commission's own procedures or arrangements for this registration is quite cumbersome, mm -hmm. quite unincentivizing and discouraging. That is why we believe that the Electoral Commission has a suppression agenda. Because if... A suppression agenda? Yeah, the, if the, against who? If the registration process becomes very cumbersome for Ghanaians, then a Ghanaian will have to ask himself, why do I have to sit at um, a registration center or travel all this while to a capital to go and register? Two days challenges out of 23, and you describe no, it as well, cumbersome. Here, I'm talking about proximity. Okay. I'm talking about proximity in terms of where the people come from to come and register at a particular center. Quite apart from the fact that they created some hard-to-reach areas. I mean, it was not adequate. But I think, I think that basically we must commend also the various district officers of the Electoral Commission, who some of them, a lot of them have been very professional, very cooperative with the political parties, even though the Electoral Commission have now turned the political parties and major actors who are carrying out the registration exercise, because we would have to bus people to go to the registration centers because of <clears throat> poor or limited accessibility. So MPP, NDC, CPP, we are now doing the busing of people. But, but that can never be the responsibility of the Electoral Commission. Well, if you, if you create adequate accessibility mm -hmm. where registration is decentralized to the people, then MPP doesn't have to worry itself. NDC doesn't have to worry itself. So that's the dilemma we yeah, find yeah. ourselves, which we must be looking at in future and going forward. Or subsequent. This is supposed to be your initial, your initial comments. Yes, on but apart, yes. apart from that, I also think that the commission itself, even though we hold our high reservations about the competence, the professionalism, and the willingness of the commission to work with the political parties, in order to attract credibility to them. So we have to commend them, of course, that by and large, the exercise have been very successful, apart from some uh, difficulties, some altercations that we had. I think it's normal of the game. Mm. We must commend them for it. Apart from the fact that we hold Electoral Commission accountable to the missing BVR machines, yes, and then we'll come to that. Operational we'll come to that. Your, 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 your other colleague on the other side of the political... Uh, uh, Evans Nimakum, director of elections with the MP, also joins via Zoom. Evans, uh, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, I will just speak your initial <laughs> talks on how the, uh, the, the limited <laughs> registration exercise went as far as the MPP is concerned. I'm going to easy. No, my brother. My brother. <laughs> Headquarters, yeah. Evans, if you can hear me. Colleagues are in the studio. Yes, but please go on. As usual of the NDC. Yes, please go on. I'm saying as, as usual of the NDC. Well, as I'm saying, as usual of the NDC, they would never stop disappointing their, their base. But Mustafa, if the NDC uh, is organizing and bashing people, that is up to you. The New Patriotic Party has never been in this business, bashing people to registration centers. All that we've been doing, and our agents have been doing, is to monitor the exercise from day one. We all admit that the first two days, there were some challenges. So uh, we were not surprised the EC extended the exercise by additional two days. We are also aware, and from the discussions we've had at the IPAC, EC intends to do a mop-up to ensure that all those who are eligible will be able to have their names onto the electoral mm. But some of the challenges we encountered in this exercise has to do with people who are not eligible trying to get their names onto the electoral room. Many Ele uh, minors and non ghanaians okay. And this is the main reason why the, the new patriotic party supported the EC to lay a new CI that will ensure that people who are eligible to register will identify themselves
by the use of the Ghana card. Mm. Strangely and interestingly, the NDC said no. And so we recorded over 12,000 people who, who are being challenged as a result of either being a minor or being non ghanaian And if we had agreed and supported the EC to have come up with a new CI that would have used the Ghana card as means of identification, all these challenges would have been a thing of the past. I think going forward, we must, as stakeholders, ensure that we comply with the rules of the game. And registration is registration. Becoming a voter is legitimate, legitimate right of, of the citizen. And nothing must stop uh, anybody from getting his or her name onto the electoral roll. But because of the mischief of the NDC, we've had to monitor this exercise mm. and go through this challenge. Right. So my understanding is that after the IPAC meeting, going forward, all the parties agreed with the Electoral Commission that there should be a new CI that will recognize only the Ghana card as a sole means of identification in future registration exercises. That, that, that has always been the position of the new Patriotic Party, that as much as possible, let's have a system that will ensure that you have a register that is clean, that has people who are really qualified to be on the electoral roll and not to have a United Nations register for Ghana. And, oh. and that has been the position of the, the new Patriotic Party. All right, so uh, Evans, you, you hold it for me there. Let, let me bring in uh, Dr. Shrewan. So, Doctor, how did we do after 23 days of registration? In terms of the figures? In terms of the figures. Yeah, I think that I don't have this provisionary. The provisionary, we have registered 700. This is up to what day? As of the 20, 22nd day. Okay. It's, it's really it just just said that is outstanding. We had then raised provisionally mm -hmm. seven hundred and forty seven thousand seven hundred and fifteen. Seven hundred and forty seven thousand. Seven hundred and fifteen. Are you closer or you've exceeded the target? The target was six hundred and twenty three thousand. So mm -hmm. we've gone beyond that by um, uh, for this almost uh, ten, uh, ten, 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 ten hundred thousand more. Yes, more, more than, because 623 mm -hmm. against 743, more than 100,000. And that for you is impressive, isn't it? I'm not, it's not that being impressive <laughs> on that, but with the quality of the names. Mm -hmm. If they are, we are, the party themselves are fighting over uh, registration of minors, mm -hmm. foreigners, and the rest, meaning that we have a, a lot of work to do to screen, screen the register, which and, we are going to start for. And the last time we spoke, last week when we were here, you told us that over 9,000 people were being investigated. Yes. Has the number gone up? Or is, the same? Now it's around 12,000. Now, now it's around 12,000. Yes. And, this, and, this, and this relates to who? Uh, the, those who, in terms of those the, who the, are, the, who the, are, the, the, the qualification aspect. The, the, they, were, they were challenging the cost of registering mm -hmm. on grounds that they were not 18 years, they were not Ghanaians, or they were not residing in the district they were claiming to be. Mm -hmm. So when are you going to sit on these cases? They have started sitting on them. So we are hoping that probably by next week we should, they should have finished. Mm. Even some of the districts may finish uh, uh, today or tomorrow. Because okay. as and when they, they, they are challenged, they are adjudicated on. And, and the irony of it is that it's within the uh, powers of the political party themselves, they are part of the team. Mm -hmm. And the uh, instance, they, they have to vote on whether to disqualify or not to disqualify. But I'm thinking that this one should be very clear. Mm. If the person doesn't put produce evidence that is 18 years. Why should we be voting on that? Mm. But still, the, part, the, the parties, uh, our, our, our problems, and they will end up accusing us that we didn't do a, a good job. Because the basin, that is the result of the basin. Mm. If the individual is going on his own volition, it will be difficult for somebody who is not 18 to go voluntarily. To but if they are being biased, they know that somebody is behind them. Mm -hmm. And that is a challenge. And then after this investigation, what happened to them? The, the committee's duty... If it is a service that they violated the law. The committee's duty is only to establish whether they are qualified or not. Mm -hmm. The rest is for the commission to decide to prosecute or not to prosecute. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fawad, why would you take people who are under 18 to a registration centre to be registered? Well, I, I think that basically <clears throat> my party didn't sanction minors and foreigners to be, you know, moved or facilitated to registration center mm -hmm. and if there are such cases I believe that that is why the Commission has a mandate to clean up the register and so that should be done only in a manner that is credible and transparent so that they don't end up deleting 
even people who are not, uh, uh, you know, minors or exactly. foreigners. That is the only challenge I have. I'm, sur I'm 13, surprised. Thirteen thousand people. I'm surprised that my my brother Nimaku is denying that political parties have not passed, and that is MPP makes it very difficult for honesty to prevail. Political parties actually facilitated our parliamentary candidates mm -hmm. to do basel because virtually the economy is hard, people don't have money, they cannot travel the distance. So parliamentary candidates of all political parties were involved and engaged in moving these people. The MPP said they were not. We did. We did. And, and, so, and it's the reason why we are recording so many minors. No, no, no. Uh, no minors would have occasioned anyway. That is why we have a window and the Electoral Commission are the gatekeepers. And so we you support the cleaning up of the exercise? No, I support, I support that. I'm just saying that we should do it in a manner that does not end up removing other people who, though they are qualified, their names cannot be found. 2020, we had a similar issue where people who were not minors, they were not foreigners. In the process of cleaning the register, it ended up that we deleted their names and that was supposed to be coming from certain strongholds of the NDP, NDC. If we do it in a way that is transparent, it's credible, it has the involvement of all political parties, like you said, except that just this afternoon mm -hmm. I saw the letter they wrote asking for the, 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 the nomination the, of reps. Right. They wrote the letter on the 30th. That was an adjudication. Yes. There are two different things. The letter was written on the 30th, or 27th. Mm -hmm. Action was supposed to be taken on 29th. The NDC received the letter on the 30th. Today. And the distance between NDC's headquarters and the commission is five minutes. So when you have to encounter these things, then you ask yourself, is it administrative incompetence or is deliberately to hold back the NDC's involvement? We have transfers today, right? Yesterday's IPAC, it was agreed that agents will be represented, am I lying? But you have some electoral commission officers at the district level denying flatly that agents are not supposed to be there. Police commanders getting involved. Why didn't the, the commission the, send notices? The, 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 this is the mediation meetings, so, right? No, I'm just saying that these are the challenges that we have. What the Electoral Commission does, that brings out the communications and all the, the, the rancor that we have. But if, once he's here, maybe I'll, I'll allow him, Dr. So, what do you have a response on this claim of first not giving them the communication on time and also your district officers preventing reps from the political party from being part of this uh, meeting? Uh, I understand maybe he doesn't understand how the process works. We are talking of the adjudication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The adjudication team will go into the system, pull out all the names of people the yeah. system has flagged. Mm -hmm. All right. Then when they have come with their report, then the adjudication committee will be sitting on. Right. The committee can never sit this week. Because even the education team is here to start work. Mm -hmm. So when the letters were sent, sent to all the... We, sent, they, we, we are working with five political parties, three SOs, three CSOs, and the Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. All the letters went yes, yesterday. The education team is made up of Electoral Commission staff. Right. They will go into the database and fish out the suspected uh, multiple reg registrants. Mm -hmm. Then we, the committee will now look at it and judge whether they are genuine or they were errors and errors. All right. That will start work. I was speaking to the, the we, language we, of their own letter. Mm -hmm. But we are planning to do the inauguration tomorrow. So, so, so we are not even there yet. Uh, we are planning to do yeah, the inauguration I'm, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm just, so it's after inauguation that the, 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 committee the, the meeting will be being set. Yes. Okay. And we will do that for every... So what about your, your directors and police commanders? You know. Police well, commanders are not... Driving. No, no. So the report we have... As we are talking of the agents. Yes. Police oh. commanders and your directors at the district level. Some of them are preventing from... The preventing... Yes. Police. But, but again, he says but that the, the, the inauguration is even tomorrow. So the meeting has not even started. Whichever way it is, we are being vigilant. <laughs> what is the business of a police commander when you haven't received instruction from the headquarters to drive to a, a transfer center and say, agents cannot be there? This is the message. As in, when I the okay. So, so the point is that until the integration is done and the meeting starts, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I mean, you may have concerns, all right, but I, I don't think we are there yet. Yes. I don't think we are there. But you, you, you've been listening, Mr. Palu. What do you make of this? I don't know whether your party was also involved in the bastion of people who are, who, are not, who, who are not qualified, but want them to qualify at all costs. Oh, no. It's something that we will never do. We don't encourage those things mm. because we believe that uh, bashing somebody there doesn't mean the person is going to vote Marco for Marco is it. laughing at you. Yeah. 
because we will never do such a thing. Mm. You, you see, if you take a person like Hobson Adoye, <laughs> Adoye was a, a staunch MPP member. Mm -hmm. Now, look at his stance. Okay? Mm. So, busing somebody to go and register doesn't guarantee, guarantee that the person is going to vote for you. Mm. So, why waste that money? Okay? Why waste that money? Because, you see, I don't know why I will waste my money to do those things. I will never do such a thing. And uh, let me also tell you, if you go to people and you campaign to them and you give them reasons why they should vote for you, they'll vote for you. So you can buy the people to go there, but I will go and talk to the, the person why they should vote for me, and they will vote for me. So I don't see the need to invest my limited resources in that exercise. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a problem with the arrangement uh, of the Electoral Commission limiting it to about 1,000 registration centers. Mm -hmm. I, I, in my opinion, I, I think we should be able to do it in every electoral area. In the future? Yes, in every electoral area. When we do it in every electoral area, it will help. Though, uh, instead of spending 21 days, we can even limit it to 10 days. And the exercise will be done and done properly. Mm. Because in the electoral area, working to that place wouldn't be difficult for so many people. But shouldn't rather be proposing continuous registration exercise? Uh, you see... To register uh, foreigners. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 that should be the ideal. Mm -hmm. But looking at the number of people who went to register this time around with uh, guarantee or the guarantor support system, mm -hmm. you can see that there were even about 60%. Mm. Those who went with the... Uh, they got a card. They were less than 40%. Mm. And those who went with the passports were about 2% or so. So meaning that we still have chunk of... But of isn't people. that the reason we're having the issue with even determining the ages of, yeah. of, of, so, of those people? So it means the National uh, Identification yeah. Authority yeah. Mm -hmm. must be up and doing. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you see, we are only... Those are the National Identification. Their interest is on the issuing of the, the card. card. And to me, I don't think the cause is necessary. Okay. What is important is the, the number. Mm -hmm. So when you capture the person's data, you should be able to give the person his number. You can even write it with a pen or print it on a sheet of paper. So that should be the concentration. Mm -hmm. But they are wasting time thinking that they have to get uh, your picture and print something. How will you do something for a three-year-old or a one-day-old a, a baby? Okay. But when you are giving numbers, the moment the child is born at the hospital, is issued a, a, a number automatically because the biometrics can be captured any day, any time. Mm -hmm. You understand? So these are something that they have to, if that they seriously mm -hmm. want to have this uh, continuous registration carried on, I think that is the best way. Let, 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 let me bring in uh, Evans. Yeah. Evans, yeah. You, you, you've been listening yeah, to you. your colleagues. <laughs> I mean, the EC says 13,000, you know, uh, challenges that they, 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 they will have to deal with. And the inauguration is tomorrow and then the committee will start to look at it. I mean, regardless of what happens, some may, some may be prosecuted, some will have their names in the, in, the, in the electoral role. What do you make of this, and how supportive is the MPP in this regard? <laughs> I, I, yeah, so I, I think the, it, it's frozen, we'll try and reestablish Connection with the Evans Nimakon, Director of Relations with the MPP. But again, Mustafa, is that the only concern you have? Um, no, that, that so far, for me, as I said, we are a bit happy so far that we finished a successful registration mm -hmm. exercise. I mean, Dr. Kweku Srebo have been on shows to and fro explaining the issues. I am happy that, by and large, we are finished and we congratulate them. Mm -hmm. I think we must give them <laughs> for the first time that credit for the, for the first, first time. Uh -huh. We must give them, the, but we'll come back to the issue yeah. of how many marks are you giving? The the missing, uh, how many marks are you giving? Are you giving the, the EC? Which one? Mass. How many marks? Percentage. Percentage. Oh, I think beyond the issue of the missing BVR machines, which we suspect MPP. Uh, <laughs> you suspect MPP to yeah, be behind yeah, the missing BVR yeah, yeah. machines. I mean, they have, they have something to do about it. But apart from that, I think beyond the errors and all of it, we must commend them. It's not easy being turn between political parties. Mm -hmm. I mean, we must admit that. Right. That when political party interests would have to be attacking you every day to see that you do the right thing. And they have, you know, sometimes to their grounds, except that they haven't accounted for the missing BVR machine. <laughs> and for him having corrected 
and stated the position that agents are admitted to the transfer exercise. I think that I'm happy because mm -hmm. this was the difficulty we had in the morning where mm -hmm. police commanders were so in a hurry going to registration centers, uh, transfer centers, and exactly. And I was like, what, on what authority are you acting? Because the electoral commission is the mother body of the entire process. Mm -hmm. If they haven't issued an instruction, the status quo remain the same until otherwise they state. So once they stated this one, we, we are certain that we are good to go. Uh, and we expect to have more collaboration with the electoral commission. I have always been of the view that the electoral commission cannot survive on its own without consensual from stakeholders. It needs the buy-in of the public's opinion and support. Mm. Political parties supporting it to be, you know, uh, referees of the game. And so once they are able to stand in the middle, and I want to caution Dr. Sribo Kuku that the party in power, the MPP, is power drunk, and they have the tendency mm. of manipulating state institutions. Right. So if they don't stand their values and principles, then they will continue to come under scrutiny and attacks from political parties. Let, let me bring in Evans again. He wants to now come in. I think that the connection is now established. Mr. Demarco, Hello. Yes, you welcome back. So I asked you about the EC said they are investigating 13,000. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, please. The EC is investigating 13,000 applicants. Uh, how, how, how involved is the MPP in this exercise so that those who are not supposed to be on the list will be taken out and possibly uh, go through the, 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 the legal regime? Well, I couldn't hear you all, but if you ask me about the challenge system and all that, that, that are in place, mm. the position of the new patriotic party is clear. Going into the future, people must register by identifying themselves with the NIA card. It takes away the unnecessary challenges. It is true that if you want to procure the NIA card, you could use the guarantor system. But the at 750 is very clear that it is only a relative who can guarantee for you. And beyond that, that relative might swear an oath before a commissioner's oath. So that arrangement is more stringent than we have under the EC guarantor system. Mm. All these things could be avoided. Mm. The act says that there must be continuous registration. But you see, the EC system, the online is restricted to the district offices. Mm -hmm. Once you go offline, it also create an avenue for people to do multiple registration and also allow for all other excesses. And so all these things could be avoided. If you all agree, way back in 2014, before 2016, the new patriotic party has said that our register then was bloated and there was the need to clean it up. But NDC said no. But my brother, <laughs> let me make it clear to Mustafa mm -hmm. and viewers. Mm -hmm. The new patriotic party won elections in 2000. Dr. Kojan Farijan was the EC. We won elections in 2016. Madame Charlotte Osele was the EC. We won elections in 2020. For us, winning elections is not who sits there as the chair or the commissioner for the electoral commission. Mm. We work at constituencies. We mobilize our base, our polling station executives, get to work with the register that we secure from the EC, and we identify voters and reach out to them. We saw our candidate. The experiences we are learning now from the kind of parliament we have is not going to happen after December 7th. Dr. Baumia will win with massive percentage, will have maximum percentage overwhelming lead in parliament to ensure that government business Will be promoted rather than to be heckled in this manner. Mustafa and Co can sit at the studios, bars people to registration centers, encourage minors to be on the register. We will challenge. But let me also put it on record. Yesterday at IPAC, parties agreed that the transfer system that is starting today, right. parties will have agents around. Yeah, it we is for EC to send the official communication to all stakeholders. You don't have the communication yet? I'm saying that I've not cited it, but it is for EC to communicate to the security agencies that at IPAC meeting of yesterday, we've agreed that we have an agent to ensure that 
anybody who appears before the district officer to apply for transfer would have met the requirement as it is in the CI 127. Right. That said, we should be fine. There must be no give and take about this. I think that the CI is clear. But people who are going to go through this must satisfy the criteria as stated in the CI 127. Uh, Mr. Marco, it is absolutely clear that the MPP's confidence in the, M in the, in the Electoral Commission is, 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 is just solid. I mean, and, and it begs the question, it's like when in power, the relationship is quite flawless, if you like. Don't get it, don't get it wrong. <laughs> I'm saying that whoever sits there as the EC, it's none of our business. Mm -hmm. Our business is to ensure that what is spelled out in the CI gets to work. And we monitor it. That is why for every center that there was registration, our agents were there. Mm. Strangely, yesterday at the IPAC meeting, NDC said the end of day reports, they scan it, and they have all the serial numbers. I had challenged them on your studio that they can never have serial numbers of the BVR kit, but then this will say they will have it. For what? I mean, there are things that you need to follow when it comes to elections than to create the unnecessary tension. I'm, and I'll continue to say it. When it comes to elections, the new patriotic party, they are professors. They are students. <laughs> they wouldn't understand. All right. I, I'll come back to you again on that. Uh, but uh, uh, just, okay. Okay, Mr. Palu. Uh, because, and then uh, because there's, uh, there's a legitimate question I want to ask Mr. Palu, uh, yeah, which I'll allow. Yes. Uh, because we are starting mm -hmm. uh, transfers today, uh, I, I want to know from the Electoral Commission mm -hmm. what they've done, uh, what, what kind of education that they've given to the voters who want to do the transfer because somebody must know what they should do. Exactly. Where you should go and do the transfer. Mm -hmm. Does you go uh, back? The, the issue, issue, the Electoral Committee issue, issue a statement on that, but I'll allow Dr. Sebo to respond to that okay. question. Yeah, so if you, if you go to the district offices now, you read, read that the message had gone deep to the ground. Mm. The offices are choked with applicants. Right. But as uh, we said, the transfer, the prosy, the replacement are all done at the district offices. Mm -hmm. But you need to uh, biometrically be checked from the data center. It is, it is the district office that you can have reliable connectivity mm -hmm. to do that. So you go there with your ID card. and Where, where he was or the new place? The new, no, you, you are saying that you were in Kumasi. Now you are in Accra. Now you are in, now, now in Accra. Mm -hmm. It will not be prudent for you to say, go to Kumasi. Mm -hmm. So for your new place is where you are going to, exactly. to do that. Exactly. You go with the, uh, the voter ID card. You should also go with evidence mm -hmm. that actually you have relocated mm -hmm. and you have stayed at a new place for no less than 12 months. Mm -hmm. Once you have, you have that one, and you are a general register, general register voter, we'll go to you put your fingerprint on, you go through. There's also the replacement, which is, which, which is coming at a cost. Yes. If, if you were giving them the, the card free of charge and you have misplaced it, so you have to pay something to... Uh, get to the electoral commission, but you have a special dispensation for those who are affected by the flaws in the voter. They, they are not paying anything. Mm -hmm. But that was, it was not their fault that they lost them. Mm -hmm. But if you have... And this is, it will interest you to know that there have been instances where somebody will uh, have for, go for replacement at the district office. He will leave the card in the, in the, in the, in the, the card that he's using. <laughs> and the next day, he will come back. <laughs> so, uh, and you know, uh, if people don't, don't appreciate the value of the, even the laminator. Mm -hmm. The laminator is very expensive, mm -hmm. if you look at it. So you need to pay something to, to set the cost. To of, get that done. Mr. And Mr. once you pay for mm -hmm. something, you take good care of it. All right. Mr. Fab, I mean, before, before the limited voice, we had a lot of concerns with the Electoral Commission. Yeah. Now you are sitting here and commending them. Is it to suggest that perhaps some of your, crit your criticism were misplaced? No, 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 no. You, you thought the EC were up to some mischief? No, no. But, the, end, but, but, but the, 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 the way the exercise went sort of diffused whatever challenges you had with the operations of the Electoral Commission. No. As you sit today and commend them for the work you've done no, so far. No, I disagree because... Um, when BVR machines are missing <laughs> and cannot be found. Some people are, in, are, are, are the police is investigating this matter. No, no. It is see, before court. It is. Exactly. So I, I have always said that the police was created by law to look for substances that contribute to criminal offenses. We are more interested in the administrative accountability and stock taking of these machines mm -hmm. so that 
we can all come to a position where we know machines that have been stolen out of machines that we have. Then we can be sure that nobody will bypass the system and then use those machines for anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that someone has the machine or someone doesn't have it. But once we lock the system, nobody can be able to do Number two, the Electoral Commission recruited returning officers illegally. We've stated that publicly. Oh. They, they were supposed to have advertised their... their, their, their no, no their, even, their... even when they have compiled their proposed nominees, mm -hmm. They were supposed to have sent the copies of same to political parties for their objection. Their or details. They didn't do that, and he would tell. Are you, are you referring to the registration officers or returning officers? The re, the, you use the returning officers for the registration exercise. That was what the commissioner no, that, said that, in her press conference. Okay, let me explain. Yes. You see, if you sit here and say that we were not given the list, then I'm, uh, I will say that you are not being truthful, mm -hmm. because all the. Uh, the law said we should give them 14 days to the exercise. And they were given? We couldn't meet the 14 day deadline. Voila. But we met, they met at the DAPAC meetings before the registration, and they were given. Yeah, so, so you are this, and they were not given to you at the national level. Mm -hmm. the, the, the work is being done at the district offices. Mm -hmm. So you yourself, you have the members at the DIPAC. They were, they were, those were, so it is not absolutely agree, true. You agree that, 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 that you didn't have the details. You agree the that that was in violation of what the law says. So the, we are sticking to the law. The 14 day period. The 14 day period. But, but so you tell us that, that, but you had it eventually. Exactly. But no, of, of course we have a way of having it, but it was a violation no, of the law. Uh, uh, not a way you had it from the EC. From, from the EC. We, it's a violation of the law. <laughs> it's, oh, we so cannot I, violate the law. Uh -huh. you see, what I want you to say is that mm -hmm. we got it, but we did not get it at the time maybe we were looking for. Uh -huh. That will have no qualms. We, but if you said that you were not given... You didn't then, follow the law. Mm -hmm. The okay. commission didn't follow the law. Mm -hmm. But you have it. If you had followed the law, you would have had it on time. But okay. you still... The, but you had it before Of course, the... but through a violation of the law. That is what we are talking about. Okay. So will you violate another law in declaration of results? Is it, is is it, is it, uh, Mr. Well, let me explain certain things to you. Yes. Uh, if the law itself was uh, promulgated by the electoral commission. Mm -hmm. Correct. But some of them, are, I myself think that we have... To, uh, Stretch some of them on yourselves. Yes, mm -hmm. because you see, we are dealing with political parties and we know you very well. <laughs> we normally do training close to the exercise. Mm -hmm. We have never finished training more than two weeks before an exercise mm -hmm. because of the possibility of somebody right. falling under. So we normally finish registration, uh, training the week to the exercise. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have been given the list before training, mm -hmm. And we finish the training, and some people have dropped out, and we go with you different need to, you need to do replacement. You are the very people who come you and say that, that we have given you different lists, and so we said that fine. Let's finish with the training so that we are sure of the people we are using. Then we give them. But, but the law says fourteen days. Yeah. So well, if you have difficulty that. with it, then we, we well, have to find a way to amend the law. The law. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but this is the case. The case we wanted to amend the law. You said that you. No, no. The law had certain which Mr. Palu then have noted that even with this current registration. Mm -hmm. About 60 to 70% of the people who registered use the guarantee system. Mm -hmm. So if you were asking for Ghana card as a sole document, without the fault of Ghanaians, without the fault of the commission, would that disenfranchise all these people? Isn't, isn't, isn't it also possible that some of these 70 to 60 to 70 people they have, have the guard Ghana card, but still refuse to use it. This is, let, no, let, let, no, let, let, let me give you You cannot card. speculate. Okay. No, but it's not self speculate. I don't understand it. There are, there are people we encounter them and they will tell you that they were in the market, they were somewhere, and somebody came and buzzed them to the place. So they couldn't go home. To so it, it, all some of these things are... Those, as are sampled, the those are sampled views. But the major issue, the substantive matter is that mm -hmm. even when we started Ghana Card, there was COVID. So we agreed that a lot of people could not have registered. Mm. Even now, when you go to NIA office, it's choked more than the Electoral Commission. Right. So I'm just saying, without the fault of the Electoral Commission, mm -hmm. without the fault of Ghanaians, we would have disenfranchised a lot of Ghanaians. Mm. So we must agree with that simplicity. Beyond that, I'm just saying that we don't have, NDC does not have any problem with the Electoral Commission. To antagonize the Electoral Commission without basis. Because in any case, they would declare us as winners of the 2024 election. That one, if Ghanaians vote for the NDC, we will be declared as winners of that election. And I'm just saying that we should put systems in place so that the election will reflect the will of the people, so that the Electoral Commission, in its solemn mandate to declare 
who Ghanaians have chosen. Do, that do, is what do, we want. Do, do, do you have the serial numbers of the BVR machines that we do have? You, and, and Dr. Kweku will tell you that we don't have, but we have. <laughs> but, but we have. But, 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 and, and we are in the and, and, and I just want to find out. I mean, I'm sure you use the serial numbers to track the, the exercise. The in our own way, we are using it to trap, but it's easier. Is it, is it is different from what the EC is reporting? No, it's different. It's different. It's very different. They're discrepancies. That will tell you. The list that they are giving, end of day, start of day, and they have nothing at all to do with them. The, 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 the serial numbers. Yeah, yeah, you insist so, that they don't have so it. If, if, they are simply if, telling us if, that if, somebody, if, those who stole the BVR machines, would have used them. No. In this registration, no, nobody has told him. Nobody has told him BVR machine. I'm coming to. Nobody has told him BVR machine. There's a difference between. No, please. There's a difference between the BVR. If I come to you in a GFI, I allow Mr. Kufia to come. There's a difference between the BVR kit and the laptop in the BVR kit. There are two different issues. Okay. You understand? So if 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 you pick the the laptop, you have not stolen the BVR. Of course. The kit is made up of the laptop, the fingerprint scanner. The the, the 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 printer, the, the camera, and but other a lot of things in so the laptop. Which one stores the data? Is the server. You, once you do so, it, I mean the laptop doesn't store data. Not no. all. It's a workstation. For example, all the research that we have done, mm -hmm. they, all they are done and they are done. So immediately we finish within the next week. We will do the end of life, and then we we'll take away all the time. They will come back to uh, manufacturers. Uh, Status. But if so you, had, don't keep them, if you had started a transparent yeah. process mm -hmm. of us doing an inquiry or trying to do an accounting into the establish business. how the no, if some, once somebody sees uh, you would have once somebody all the, the police the police are not independent body. Why you so the police, the police are not. It's it not the some people are the in police. court. The court will pronounce judgment on it, and then all of us. The can police go won't give sleep. you that. The police will. My brother, no, no, they can. It's not the So, so once somebody come to see see this laptop, where do you go? The police are now auditors. Okay, no. Mr. Kofi Apollo, yeah. I mean, you've been listening and then do? I can bring in Ivan's name. Yeah. Yeah. What are they going to do? The police will do it. My brother, Mustafa. Mustafa. Still in the BVD or whatever. The, the, the lab, lab things. Yeah, if they don't give you access to their central database. Who will give you the access? No, I'm coming. With, that, with the, the equipment, even if you have all of them. Yes. If you don't have access, to the server. Yes. Everything that they're going to do will be meaningless. The but somebody must provide the access. Somebody must give So the it means there will be a, a, no, so a, if we will give you I said, why would we why do we steal it? <laughs> if the Electoral Commission wants to but use you, the machine to do legal registration, <laughs> the machines are with us. Why, why do we steal it? It's that? not you who do it. It's a political party that will <laughs> would aid okay. from okay. the Electoral right. so, 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 so you see, that. and then you remember mm -hmm. every system has a trail, an audit trail. Mm -hmm. So at any point in time, when you log on to the system, you'll be recorded. So nobody will be able to do what uh, you are suggesting. So you are okay with the set of the oh, yes. machines? Yeah, nobody can add anything. He himself, he knows. He knows the truth. He himself, he knows. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Ivan Simako, you're, you're, <laughs> you, 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 you've been yearning to, to add to the discussion. Please go uh, on. Okay, so thank you. Uh, uh, student Mustafa. He's coming to attack me, you see? <laughs> MPP is like that. Yes, please go on. <laughs> you, you see, when when this whole registration exercise commenced, BVRs are located to registration centers without activation codes could not work. We know that. It accounted for the day one, day two challenges. A laptop component of the BVR. I still do not understand why NDC is making huge and cry about this. Oh. But that is NDC. Stop moving it. on, moving on, I'll crave your indulgence. There are more serious issues to be considered. L like what, for example? There are, there are people who registered under the guarantor system. We are not able to tell whether these people already have NI card or otherwise. Mm. In yesterday's discussion at IPAC, we said that there might be enough support to NIA to cover all those who are supposed to be covered under the act, so that in an event of using the NIA as a means of identification and registration, 
nobody will be disenfranchised. But my brother, mm. if today Mustafa will have to travel to Togo tomorrow and he requires the use of passport, he will rush to passport office to secure one. But because under the existing act, there's an opportunity for a guarantor arrangement. That is why even people who may have had NIA will still use the guarantor arrangement. But we are seeing the challenges, and we are seeing that all these are avoidable. Mm. I think that we've had a successful 21, 23 the exercise. exercise. Mm. The, the understanding we've gotten as a party from EC is that there will be a mop-up. What is required of them is to ensure that all who are qualified under the law mm. be given the opportunity to do so. That on the day of reckoning, December 7, 2024, they will turn out massively to vote for a forward-looking presidential candidate his Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Baumia mm. give New Patriotic Party seat overwhelmingly enough in Parliament to ensure that government business will be facilitated so that Ghana will develop. We cannot continue to entertain this poster from NDC. Whether you like it or not, they won't change. And so for us, we've learned a lot in this exercise. We will continue to offer the necessary advice to EC at the IPA platform right. to ensure that our multi-party democracy will grow. I appreciate what you are doing, bringing all stakeholders together to discuss our views on the way forward, looking at the challenges you've gone through, learn from the positives, so that we can have a system that is foolproof and have all who are qualified to be on the electoral roll. I think what they said, we should be fine. But and, 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 and you don't have you don't have any issue whether you have the CUR numbers or not. But you see, <laughs> you want suspects. to have CUR numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Go into this exercise. Mm -hmm. One issue was clear. Registration will be conducted in all the 268 district offices. Mm. Additional difficult to raise <coughs> 775 have been identified. 785. Additional 25 tertiary institutions have been identified, adding up to 800. Mm. All these were gazetted. New Patriotic Party made sure that our agents were stationed in all these places. Even the mobile ones, we followed them. So if you want serial number to do what? at the end of this exercise, and even while the registration was ongoing, we were given end of day reports. Mm. At the end of this whole exercise, EC is bound by law to give to us as political party provisional register. There's also going to be exhibition of the register in all polling stations. Right. We may object issues where we have to. Beyond that, the final register will be given to us as a political party. And we work with it. And, and so if today NDC will come to IPAC and say, when are you doing purification of the register? We started discussing cleaning of the register way back in 2013, after 2012 elections. Mm. And we saw what Madam Salota said. It. And so for NDC and, and, and student Mustafa, they won't change. <laughs> Ivan, thank you so much. Uh, I'll come back for your final wrap on this matter. But uh, again, let me go around the table again, start with Mustafa. I mean, the limited registration is over, but there are a lot more that the EC will have to do. Yeah. Controversial issues are about to come <clears> up. <throat> uh, it's good that you are now fully participating in the IPAC meeting. Yeah. There appears to be have been lowering of the tension that existed between you and the electoral college, perhaps uh, because of how discussions are ongoing. What, 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 what will be your expectation of the EC as we move into the more you know, controversial issues? Well, I think that the EC itself would have to appreciate the issues that are being raised. Political parties will always have concerns. Mm. And those concerns will have to be addressed. That is why we have IPAC. I think if we attend frequent IPAC and EC comes with the full willingness, 
the openness, transparency to address concerns raised by political parties, then we are in the position to, to help the electoral council. Why not? I mean, this is the body that regulates our elections. By and large, this is the same body that will have to announce the winner of the election. We only expect that <clears throat> that body <clears throat> should be devoid of political influences. Mm -hmm. We expect that that body will be more responsible, more professional, to uphold integrity, the highest standard of integrity. Where do you draw the line? Where the, 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 the political parties, they may have proposals, but the is an independent body, and they have every right to say that we reject your proposal and we are going yeah. with what we think is the best I, for the country. I, I, the, I've always said that the Electoral Commission as a body has been given limited or no discretion. It's regulated by strictly law. by law. Right. There's minimal room for anybody to apply discretion. And so when it comes to issues of the Electoral Commission, it's only about engagement, making sure that political parties are notified and part of the conversation. Mm. But no political party should be able to change the position of a firm Electoral Commission if the Electoral Commission's decision is lawful and taken within the rudiments of the law. I've just pointed out to you, and he agrees, that even in, in appointments of the returning office, he agrees that the law may be a bad law, mm -hmm. but that is the law we have. And he agreed that they fell short of the law. When this happens, political parties should be adequately informed as to why the commission has fallen short. Then I think that it reduces the suspicion, it reduces the rancor, it gives room to build more trust as we go into... But from experience election. and having monitored elections in Ghana since 1992, do you, do you absolutely think that the Electoral Commission can influence the outcome of an election? I am too young to, to doubt that. And I am learning as a student, a young politician. So, I've, I've so been uh, Evans was rather you're a student? No, no, I don't know it all. <laughs> there are other seniors ahead of you on whose behalf I sit here to talk. Right. There are other people who have experienced elections more than I have. Mm -hmm. And so that is why I'm saying that I'm too young to come to a conclusion that the Electoral Commission cannot rig an election. But it is very possible. But what you've seen and how, the process, see, of, 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 how the process is done have in this country. If we don't have transparent processes, if we don't have credible processes, you can announce a resource that is a true reflection of what happened. But because of lack of trust, you haven't mm -hmm. built credibility for the institution itself, mm -hmm. then you find yourself in a problem. Even though you have announced a true reflection of what it is. The Electoral Commission should be minded to build credibility, build cons consensus, have the support of the media, have the support of the people who are going to vote, have the support of the political parties. Mm -hmm. I think that is not a difficult thing to do. All right. If you fall short of the law, let the political parties be adequately informed. Nobody will come out and say that we're not told. Mr. Palu, do you think that sometimes you political parties, you blow hot and cold at the same time, depending on how the matter suits you? Uh, come again. I'm asking whether sometimes you political parties, you blow hot and cold at the same time. I mean, depending on your, the kind of relationship or what the Electoral Commission is doing, whether it suits you or not. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's MPP and NDs who does that. <laughs> we, LPG, we don't do those things. We, we say as it is, mm. you know. Uh, prior to 2012, yeah, if you tell me somebody can rig an election, I won't doubt you. But after 2012, up to today, if you tell me the electoral commission will steal your votes for somebody, then it means you are not following the process. That suggests that before 2012, oh, elections yes. were, were, it, were manipulated? Yes, could be manipulated. In, in, you see, prior to 2012, there wasn't anything like uh, biometric. So somebody can claim that, oh, I went to this police station and I voted twice, I voted whatever, many times. But this time, after 2012, I don't know whether you have heard mm. single person saying that, oh, I went to this police station and I voted more than one. Oh, it's how? not possible. You see, these days it's very difficult to go and vote more than one. But for, before 2012, it was possible. Now, from 2012 to today, mm -hmm. Every political party that is serious with the election will definitely send an agent to a police station to monitor what is going on. Right. And then you can't just send a macho man to go to a police station. You have to send somebody who is knowledgeable. But some political parties may decide to send macho men. 
just to go and create confusion. But if you send knowledgeable men and women to go and supervise your relations, you will educate them for them to know what is expected of them. Okay, we have this uh, pink sheet. You should know what is on the on pink it. sheet. Mm -hmm. So if you know, you understand it perfectly well, it will be difficult for somebody to shortchange you. Mm -hmm. Because even before they pour out the, this thing, the ballot papers, they have to give us a report from the... The statement of the poll? Yes. How many people have gone to or cast their vote? So when they pour the this thing out, the, the ballot papers, you, sh you, you should know the number you should respect. So if you follow all this trend, there is no way somebody... The last thing is that when they are entering the figures on the pink sheet, that is where you have to be more vigilant. Right. Because you can get 300, and the person writing the 300 mistakenly... Makes it 30,000. can make it 30. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Not deliberate, but human beings as we are. That is why when you go to the bank and you deposit with the bank, they give you a paying slip. And then they expect that when you get your bank yeah. statement, you, can you do a reconciliation. So you have to be vigilant that the numbers that they are writing for everybody is the exact numbers. That is going on the pink sheet. It. Other than that. And when they finish, you will sign a pink sheet and take copy. I take copy. So when you get a copy, you go to your small office and do your own tabulation. So you'll be able to know what each candidate got. But you know, look, look at what happened at uh, 13 miles out. Somebody went there and got himself into whatever, you know, because of small misunderstanding. You see, the same thing happened at uh, Cine West. Mm. You see, the gentleman there, the NDC man there, he was shortchanged. Mm -hmm. But he didn't take the law into his own hands. What he did, uh, he went to court. And when they went to court at Techiman High Court, after everything, they realized that he won. Right. So they gave it to the NDC man. Why is that the one at the Tachiman? Where? Where? Uh, yes, no, 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 what happened was that there was one outstanding polling stage that they were contesting. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they already said that they should go and count that. It's okay. not that anybody was searching. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then that result made the difference. Okay. Okay. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, fine. But you see, things were done amicably. You know, but why should we lose life? In, in that circumstances. Yeah. But again, and then, uh, so based on that premise, let me ask Dr. Sir real quick. So the EC, I mean, exists to operate in a very transparent and, you know, uh, f with, with fairness, with high level of integrity. But the EC is also made up of human beings. Of course. Yes. Those integrity sometimes you cannot guarantee. Uh, exactly. And so how do you put yourself in an environment where so much is expected of you that we're able to live up to expectation? You see, like, like, like what we are saying, there are instances that the very people who are that we recruit may go there and do yeah, issues contrary to what. Yeah, there's been precedent. I mean, are there, are there just so something happened? Even like so, like so myself, I myself, it's because of the media they didn't pick or I didn't complain. I went to one polling station and the one who was t telling the barrel was telling and leaving the, can and the children and the on the counter for it. So I said, so if, some, if there's any issue, how do you trace? This ballot paper. Mm -hmm. Somebody who has been, and he said, oh, sir, I didn't see. But this person went through training. I said, I didn't see. I said, if you need spectacle, you need to get a guy to a spectacle before you come here. <laughs> so some of them will go to the field and do, do issues contrary. And that is why we go out to monitor. That's why the party agents themselves are also there to also do. And the transparency that you are talking of, from the printing mm -hmm. to the declaration, we are always with them. They, when, if the battle boss, they can put their, 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 yes. their seals on it. If the vehicle that we are conveying their materials with, they will come, when we lock it, they also lock it. Mm -hmm. We'll go to the police, police army. Mm -hmm. When we put our lock there, they, they also, also put, put their lock there. When police we are distributing, we we'll take the serial numbers and there. So at that point, they say that the election has been read, and then you yourself, you begin to doubt, ah, is it the same election that I was part of? <laughs> that is that is what they have. After the, me, I've grown to appreciate that I don't have to fight the politicians. I should concentrate on doing what is right and let them say what they say. I don't, they, they themselves know the truth. Mm -hmm. That is the issue. All right. At least for, for today, uh, Mr. For this is the first time I meet him on the platform. And here, even though he will, he will run, 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 but you come and appreciate that you've done a good job. 
So thank you for coming. <laughs> All right, so folks, this, this is a pause here on Hello. Joy News. Yes, uh, Evans, Hello. okay, just, I'll give you just 30 seconds before I'll take a short break yeah. and come back to wrap up the show. All right, thank, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, so as, as Kofi said, uh, prior 2012, Twelve. there could be arrangements, if you are not careful, your victory will be stolen. And New Patriotic Party, you've had history. We said the 1992 elections, our victory was stolen. In, 20, in 1996, if you remember, Amun Rebecca Adote, transpositional error, the win was given to Rebecca Adote, but the court settled it. Mm. We came all through to 2012. We saw the polling station, the hand of God, and 27-0. And you see, you've got into the stage where political parties and their agents are giving copies of the pin sheets and power voter tabulation is allowed. A new patriotic party, we've devised a system where we are able to know our results from all the 38,622 polling stations. We're well, going to 2024. The EC has notified us that they are likely to add about 4,000 more polling stations. We are putting in place mechanisms to ensure that our vote from each of the polling stations mm. will be counted for us. And so <laughs> we don't pay particular attention as to who the presiding officer is because when people are voting, the over 18.7 million people who will be turning out to vote will make a decision. Mm. And their decision will favor His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Baumia mm. as the next president. So that's what we look out for. All right. We'll take a short break and return with the final comment from our guests. This is the pause on Joy News. Welcome back. This is the pause here on Joy News with me, Elton Brobe. And of course, my guests, we're having our own version of an IPAC meeting here in the studios of Joy News. And of course, uh, Dr. Sebo Kweku is Director of Electoral Services with the Electoral Commission. Uh, Mr. Kofi Apalu is a fan of the LPG party. Mustafa Bande is Deputy General Secretary of the NDs. Of course, Evans Namako is the Director of Elections with the NPP. And he, uh, he is on Zoom as we uh, do this discussion. So a few questions I, I want to ask as we wrap up. Uh, Dr. Sebo, is there going to be a special call to deal with Electoral matches ahead of December? Court. Or, uh, uh, court. I mean... So that, one, that will come from the judiciary. I'm not aware of this. You're not aware of anything like that? Mm. I remember when the first two days we had issues that we had to do offline registration. You yourself expressed concerns with the difficulty we we're going to have in terms of people doing multiple registration. Uh, have you investigated or, or as part of the, the numbers that you are going that, to that, look that at? That's what I'm saying. That uh, uh, The team that is supposed to do the adjudication they, they will fish it out from the system. They are going to do that before we will sit on them. So to the finish, I wouldn't know the number of that the system has flagged. Mm. Yeah. But automatically, the flag will the people. And somebody sent me a text. He says that he's followed elections since 1992. Uh, during that period, he used to see the electoral commission provide the parties with vehicles and other materials to campaign. But he's not been seeing that lately. You see, uh, previously, we used to have a lot of donor support mm -hmm. and the donor some of them will come like take this vehicle and give it to the political parties they said that we have grown enough so they are now giving attention to other countries where uh, their democracy is young mm. so if we don't get those uh, facilities so if you take the 2020 election for example it was 100 percent uh, state sponsored mm -hmm. and they still would not have resources to give to political parties so they still not providing any support it's not us there's the donors who, 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 who mm -hmm. give it out through us mm -hmm. where they just a uh, conveyor belt so if you, do, if you get them, but I think since 1996, we have never gotten that. And have you, are, are you getting your budgetary allocations released oh, as on time? Half a budget, we don't have. Uh, the timing, I, I can't be 100% sure, mm -hmm. but at least whatever we need. If they are given to us as and when. Mm. For example, you are doing registration, so you give your budget for registration, and they will read the money. But I'm sure you have an idea how much it will cost us to run the 2024 elections. I, I have. I was part of the team that prepared it, but I don't have it offhand. Mm. Mm. Mustafa, as we wrap up, as to wrap up, basically, I, I think that the NDC's desire, contrary to what our brothers in the MPP <laughs> are thinking, is that... So when the two of them can't they do their presentation <laughs> no, no, without that at all. We only want a free Tom and, Jerry. and fair election. The NDC is not craving for 
an electoral commission that will support us to win an election. Mm -hmm. It's our duty. We've been beaten twice, 2016, 2020. And we've decided that the circumstances we find ourselves, where Guyanians are generally calling for a change, that change should land on the NDC. Mm. That is our duty as a political party. The Electoral Commission has a mandate to supervise midwife processes that will birth a new government for the Republic of Ghana. Right. There's peace and stability of our country from now to December 7th and to 10th depends on the Electoral Commission. We as political parties will play rules, but it keenly depends on the Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. We only want the Commission to allow its work reflect the will, mandate of the people. Mm. Engagement, collaboration, cooperation is what can give us this particular uh, uh, mandate. And but, I think that they but, 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 but from what you've seen and the assurances from Dr. Strabo, it doesn't look like they can in any way influence the outcome of the election. Again, the Electoral Commission doesn't need to give anybody an assurance. Mm -hmm. The Electoral Commission has minimal use of discretionary power. And so mm. assurance is not needed. The only thing that we require from the Electoral Commission is to do good by the law and strictly by the law. Mm. If the Electoral Commission is going by the law and what the law says, NPP it. cannot prevail on the Electoral Commission to back down. NDC cannot do the same. LPG cannot do the same. Mm. And then we will be having a firm Electoral Commission. But circumstances where you find that things are not in the open, they are in the dark, they put MPP appointees into commission and all of that. I expected Dr. Slibo Koku to object to Danado's appointment of Apia Hine, their director of operation, mm. uh, uh, IT, into the commission. No, no. But they didn't do that. He doesn't have the he's power. Not, he's not the director of IT. Uh, so the, the, Dr. Apia yeah, is not the director of IT. He's a commissioner. Yes, he's a commissioner. He's a commissioner. Yeah. They, they are two different But you so, agree that he's a political party appointee. I I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm telling you now. Okay, you are so saying these, that are the, these are the issues the that raises the suspicion. Mm -hmm. If we can have a body devoid of all these political, mm. you know, in, uh, political and uh, you know attractions and stuff, I it should be good. The NDC is good to go, but we are prepared. We right. built our system. We are training our agents. We have officers who are well positioned to be vigilant enough mm -hmm. to ensure that even if the commission doesn't or is reluctant doing its work, right. we should be able to remind them of what the law says and what is required of them. I think that Mr. Yes, we are good mm. to go. Oh, yeah, uh, we are expecting uh, a credible election in the 2024. Mm. Uh, we don't expect anything uh, different from that because we believe that the Electoral Commission will do their best mm. to make the process uh, free and fair. Free and fair. And uh, uh, something happened in the 2020 election. Uh, Somebody was uh, chairing the, this in the ballot paper, mm. and then he was removing a proof of It happened at uh, uh, three places. Uh, right. Mm. I would say in the, in the Biduri. Uh, okay. Yes, yes. Biduri, right. and then uh, instead of, you know, uh, a proof was first, and uh, Hamas second, and so on. You know, when he was uh, chairing the papers, mm. it's like a... They were leaving a Kuvado. <laughs> okay. So those those things those things need to be avoided. Mm -hmm. So it means that uh, they have to train the people very very well and also. I don't deserve it's about training. If the person wants to be that body, you will be that. Apart from that, sometimes people must also know their consequences of the actions of the actions mm -hmm. because other than that they will go on and do whatever. So such people uh, we have to inform them that they can be arrested for such uh, conduct. Offenses. So I, don't, I, I think... Don't, I don't, if they sign code of conduct, we, we, tell, we take them through all yeah. these things. Like I said, even if you have not been trained at all, wouldn't you know that the ballot paper should contain a name that you should leave some... All right. right. All right. Thank you very much. Ivan uh, Snimako, uh, just 30 seconds. Okay, so uh, I think we'll leave it here. My guess has been the... It's the, talking about the, the director of electoral services with the electoral committee, Dr. Sribo Kweku, Mustafa Agbam, the deputy general secretary of the NDC, of the LPG, and of course, Evans Nimakom with the MPP Director of Elections. For more stories, log on to our website, myenjoyonline.com. Of course, those are the stories. The Atto Forsen is requesting live telecast of proceedings in the ambulance case, uh, the matter between him, the Attorney General, and Japa. My name is Elton Brobe. Have a good evening.